My beautiful family in Christ, wherever you are in the kingdom, I thank you for joining me and I thank you for your continued support. I'd be missing you guys. Sorry, I haven't been on camera for a couple days. Let's get into it. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You ever wonder why the word doesn't say like the strength of the Lord is your strength, the might of, of, of the Lord is our strength, the power of the Lord is our strength. No, the Lord the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now this comes from Holy Spirit. So go look up where that comes from. So this comes from Nehemiah chapter 8, where Ezra is reading and explaining the law. And they probably sit there for like five, six, seven hours hearing this reading. And great revival begins. And the teachers, Ezra, and Nehemiah, they teach right from the scriptures and the people begin, they hear the scriptures and the very word cuts to their heart and they begin to cry. And the, and the teachers tell them, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And then they had understanding and they were joyful. You know, the word tells us that the people, his people, his people perish for lack of knowledge. His people the Bible talks a lot about unbelievers, and we off we like to point the, the finger. We like to point the finger at everyone else, but the truth is we need, as the body of Christ collectively, we need to deal with the beam within the eye of the body of Christ. And part of that beam is a lack of understanding, a lack of understanding of the nature and character of God, of what brings him glory, of scripture in general. You know, we read it with many interpretations. We have false teachers who, who present scripture in a way that suits personal delusions of the mind and of the heart, leading many astray. And yet it is in the true understanding of even the very law. The people here, they were hearing the law. They didn't have the New, New Testament yet. I've, I've been told some people have actually said to me, just read from the New Testament. You know, there's more love there. And, and I always say, you know, OT hasn't changed to the new T. It's all the same Lord. It's all the same God. You know, he has different aspects. And it is when people say that, it's because they lack of un an understanding of the love of God. They want the love to be as they want it to be, which is like a worldly love as opposed to the true love of God, which is about truth and justice and his nature. I mean, would you want someone just to like parts of you? only to like you on your good days? Wouldn't you want someone to love you all the way around? You know, just like Jesus loves us and that's how we love him right back. We love our Lord front to back, OT to NT, hallelujah. So here in Nehemiah, I'm gonna read a little bit. So Ezra the scribe stood on a platform of wood which they had made for the purpose and beside him at his right hand stood Mattahiah, Shema, Aniah, Urijah, Hilkiah, and Messiah, uh, which I'm sure it's pronounced differently than our Messiah, Messiah. And at his left hand, Padiah, Mishael, Melchiah, Hashem, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Mishalem. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. This is just so beautiful. I just love this. Then all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Now they're just, this is even without understanding. They're just, they're experiencing a reverence in their heart as they hear the scriptures read. This is so pure. Also, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jemen, Akab, Shabitha, Hodijah, Messiah, Kelita, Azariah, Jeho. Josabad, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites helped the people to understand the law and the people stood in their place so they read distinctly from the book in the law of God and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading and Nehemiah who was the governor Ezra the priest and scribe and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people this day is holy to the Lord your God do not mourn nor weep because what gives glory to the God to to, the, to God he is giving glory by your joy know that when he is when you are weak then he is strong it's about his strength the joy of the Lord is is his strength because when you're walking in the joy of the Lord you're in his strength you're not counting on yours 
the, the, the strength of the people of us leads us to weep and to mourn. And so he continues, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Just by hearing the word of God, they wept. You ever hear the word that just moves you like that? Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send the portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites quieted all the people, saying, be still, for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink to send portions and rejoice greatly because they understood, because they understood the words that were declared to them. You know, sometimes we can go through the word in this way with our own personal human understanding. We could even teach it with our human understanding. You know, um, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's one of my favorite verses in the whole word. And, and Holy Spirit was like, well, go see why. And I didn't, I didn't realize, you know, sometimes you just go through scriptures and I didn't realize, you know, this was all about understanding. This is all about understanding and in an understanding, which the Holy Spirit brings us into in an, in understanding, there's great joy. You know, sometimes when you can't receive the word with gladness, there's a lack of understanding. There's like a big wall. When you have to bring a lot of human understanding and darkness and, and demonic talks and, and, you know, all these unbiblical things in order to try to understand scripture, when you're not letting scripture define scripture, it's because you don't understand. So you're trying to force it. And the Lord says, you know, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. That's how anything comes to pass. And it's by his spirit and the spirit of understanding that these people heard the word and then the Lord sent teachers and they understood the word and they had great joy. Because again, you know, you can, have you ever met someone who says, oh, I read the Bible a hundred times, you know, it didn't touch me. I didn't, it's just a book, you know. I've heard people say this and it's because they read without the understanding of the Holy Spirit. There's people who claim this verse, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength, but they don't walk in the joy. Now, the joy, that's a fruit of the Holy Spirit, and you will know them by their fruit. You know, if you're not walking in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you either don't have the Holy Spirit or you're grieving the Holy Spirit to such an extent that you are, like, denying, you know, you, you refuse to walk in his joy. And when you've refused to walk in the joy of the Lord, it's because you lack understanding. And therefore, you're walking in the weakness of the flesh. You can walk in the joy of the Lord and that be your strength. And there's understanding here because the Holy Spirit's here. Or you can walk in the understanding of your human nature. And there is no joy here. There's condemnation. There's heaviness. There's shame. There's yokes and burdens from the world. There's a sin nature. There's a whole host of it's like a whole different personality. Walking in the joy of the Lord is like walking Holy Spirit led. And then there's walking, you know, the evidences of those who do not walk in the joy of the Lord. You know, it's clear there's lovelessness. It's a spirit of oppression from the spirit of religion. Jeff, gener um, how do you say generally? Because we're talking people who proclaim Jesus as Lord, not non-believers. We're talking about the body of Christ here. We're dealing with the beam in the eye of the body of Christ. And we're talking about those who claim Jesus is, is Lord, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength, but they don't walk in the joy. And they condemn others and they shame others. And generally it's because they do that to themselves. Generally, these are those who, you know, believe in some sort of works-based faith, you know, and it's it's hard, you know. I The Bible tells us specifically not to associate with those who, you know, they walk in a host of these kind of hidden covert sins because, they choose their own strength, which is futile. The joy of the Lord is your strength because there is understanding. And in lack of understanding, his people perish. The Lord's people, his own people perish because their lack of understanding. And then they walk in, you know, cynicism and religion and shame and, uh, you know, hate for others and, and unrighteous judgments and hypocrisy and a whole host of things. Both of these, the joy of the Lord with understanding and no understanding, they have different personalities. You know, the people here, 
they were hearing the law, which a lot of people today, ugh, they're just like disgusted by the law. People hear the law today and they're just like, you know, and that's not a way to be. Jesus didn't come to do away with the law. He came to be a completion of it. You know, we're set free from, from, from death. You know, but not from obeying the law. Every word of God is still true. He never, he, Jesus Christ, if he hadn't specifically said, I didn't come to do away with the law, okay. But he specifically said, I didn't come to do away with the law. However, we're not bound to the law. We're bound to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the people here, you know, they were hearing, some of them for the first time, the word of God, and they had no understanding to the point where God sent them teachers. But just from hearing it, they just began to weep. I mean, great great revival is what this is about. The great revival is what this chapter is about because in their understanding, that's when the fire was lit. In the joy of the Lord is the fire of the Holy Spirit. There be no fire for those who walk outside of understanding. There is no fire from the Holy Spirit for those who walk outside of the joy of the Lord. That's how powerful and necessary is walking in the joy of the Lord. It is a choice to rejoice. These people chose to rejoice. They didn't even know Jesus yet. They didn't even have Jesus yet, but they heard the word and they knew it was true. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, to send portions. They, they gave to the, to those who didn't have anything. Maybe some people stayed home that day. I don't, I don't want to hear about the law. I don't understand what you people are talking about. Well, these people took their portions and went rejoicing over to their houses and was like, here, let me explain to you what was just explained to me. And that's what we do here as the body. You know, we're not here to point fingers. We're not here to judge and treat each other like the world treats each other, like the world treated Jesus. We're here to love one another. And there's great understanding. Part of the, the love, you know, godly love, which is not love like the world at all. It's about truth. It's about understanding. It's about joy. It's about, it's a host the love of God. I mean, God is love. That's what the word says. God is love. And how many aspects does the Lord have, right? We were talking about the gemstone in a former video, how it just turns and turns and turns. It seems to have these, uh, how do you say, like um, infinite aspects, right? And such is the case of our Lord, which is why, you know, his, if you're chosen, you know the character of God. That was our word from the other day. And you, and you have understanding, you know, you have to know you have to know who your father is. You don't have to, you have to know who he is. Like he wants you to know who he is. He wants you to have understanding of what you're here to do. He wants you to have understanding of the scriptures. He wants you to learn to divide them rightly and not to use them to jab at people with or jab at yourself with, you know? It's not about that. You know, so I believe the Lord is, you know, I pray the spirit of revelation over all of us. I truly believe the Lord is bringing us into this deeper place of understanding. And that's what, he, you know, I just see, I always see it in visions and, and as he just, he raises the by, the by, the bar higher and higher. And he brings, you know, he heightens the, the faith of the people and as the bar and the faith goes higher. We go lower. We become more humble. You know, we become more humble before him and in our humility is their great understanding. Hallelujah. I just love the ways of the Lord and, and I'm grateful to have understanding for new understanding for this scripture that the joy of the Lord is our strength, which is 100% true. It takes great, great, it takes your free will choice to rejoice for every word of God and in the joy of the Lord is truly your strength because it's his strength.